I believe that uh, a personal fascination and individual zeal have the opportunity to uh, create a collection that's not just a self-indulgence or a hobby, but can actually have value to the wider world. Um, a love of history and the collector's gene can work together to gather materials that otherwise might be dispersed, unavailable to researchers, and make connections that have real value to the wider world. I've been interested for years as, as just somebody interested in culture and history about uh, the uniqueness of California. And many decades ago, a friend of mine was a graphic artist. Uh, he was working on a project. He took me to a paper ephemera show, something I had never heard of before. I walked in. There were dozens of vendors selling literally hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper that shouldn't have been there. These were receipts, menus, uh, uh, matchbooks, uh, postcards. And so while my friend was working and looking for the materials he needed, I was entertaining my, myself going through tens of thousands of postcards. And I gravitated towards that quintessential iconic image, snow-capped mountains, a beautiful sky, a manicured orchard, a lovely home, um, and I just thought they were great. Well, I have the collector's gene, for lack of a, any other descriptor. And when I had two, then I wanted to find more. And when I had more, then I wanted to have all of them. And I now have about 600 um, unique uh, postcards, all dealing with the California citrus industry. Uh, and I think that alone is, is pretty interesting, that an industrial enterprise could produce 600 images that someone thought someone else would want to buy they did buy them, they sent them, and people saved them. Uh, these things are 60, 70, 100 years old, and they were not thrown away. They, they resonated with people uh, then and now. As I began to collect, and, and as I had this idea that there was a story behind these images, I uh, began to refine my collection, expand my collection in some ways, to find additional materials besides postcards that showed how the orange was always perceived as special and that California, since it, as Kevin Starr says, uh, entered history as a myth, um, and that California as a special place of promise, of potential, uh, of reinvention, and the orange fit right in. It was, uh, it was destiny that the two would come together in some kind of a way, and the orange became a symbol of California's promise and potential. Uh, I have organized these um, originally just as a hobby, but then as I began to work on the book um, and pull items out that I, I knew would be extra uh, useful in the research, um, but I have organized them by subject matter. So we start with these kind of billboard um, uh, images of California Orange Day, and uh, this was a a day that was celebrated up and down the state of California. Um, it was one of those uh, lovely uh, combinations of sincere enthusiasm, commercial boosterism, uh, political expediency, and it all came together. There was a time in California where um, from the valley to Orange County, from, from Ventura all the way down to San Diego, uh, many people could uh, get up in the morning and open a window and smell uh, the wonderful fragrance of orange blossoms. Um, the, it is hard to overemphasize how big the California orange industry was. In 1895, Riverside, California, from growing oranges had the highest per capita income in America. And in 1920, as recently as 1920, the number two revenue source in the entire state of California, only behind oil, was oranges. It was a huge industry. And while it was huge, most of the groves were small, three to 10 acres and many people owned a small orchard for additional income. School teachers, shopkeepers, celebrities. Um, while there were, were certainly commercial growers, there were also many people who just had a hundred trees and, and grew them uh, for, um, to augment their income. This is the 
famous, legendary California orange crate. These were um, produced by the thousands, maybe the millions. All oranges were packed in uh, boxes just like this one. After much experimentation, this size, this weight, this construction was deemed uh, the best for shipping fresh fruit uh, thousands of miles. Sunkist uh, was the largest by far packer and shipper of uh, oranges. And um, because they wanted a stable supply of the wood needed to uh, produce these, uh, they invested in large swaths of uh, timber, which they still own to this day. As a collector, the, the hunt is, is a big part of it. Having the items is thrilling, but l searching for them and discovering them and coming upon them is, is really part of the draw. And so I will never lose um, the uh, interest in doing that, but I have studiously avoided doing that. Um, I, um, I still have the collector's gene, um, but I have some uh, ideas for other projects and I want to devote my attention and efforts and energy in that direction. Um, and yes, I, I still slide occasionally back and, and type in California Orange Orchard and, and just see what pops up. Uh, I did it just the other day and, and there were some images that I thought were very compelling. Not, not more compelling than images I have, just variations on a theme. Um, there would, be, would have been a time when I, I probably would have scooped those up immediately, but, but I did not. So uh, once I had one juicer, I thought, wow, what other juicers could there possibly be? And so I did go down a, uh, a path of collecting lots of Sunkiss juicers because over the decades, um, the size, color, and materials changed as aesthetic taste changed in America. And um, I got um, waylaid, hijacked uh, by um, all the variations there were. And so I now have uh, a number of these uh, and they're quite heavy when you go to move them. One of the things I think that a monomania collector can do is to burrow so deep and with such focus into something and find connections that perhaps a formally trained academic just wouldn't have the time, maybe not the interest, um, but to really dig down into the kind of minutia that might have historical rev relevance, it may not. I, I mentioned that I got sidetracked with the electric juicers and how they evolved over 20 or 30 years. Um, I now have those. There may be a story there. There may be a story of the companies that were subcontracted to uh, produce these. There may be a story from a design home decorating aspect. Why did they change? Why did they get larger or smaller? Why did the color of the glass bowl change from tin to Vaseline glass to jadeite glass to you know something else? So there are lots of stories to tell. Um, and if, if someone with, without monomania didn't collect it, it would just be dispersed and harder for someone else to begin to see that such variation existed and what does that mean and how, that, how can that be a part of a larger story that they're trying to tell.